We're the first ones here today. I've got to be in Woodlands, Manitoba, which is northwest of Winnipeg, an hour from here. I've got to be there at 7 a.m. So it's 5.30 right now. I don't have too much time to get ready. I gotta quickly go around to the back, get my truck started, get it warmed up, make sure I have all the right equipment, grab a trailer, and take off. Okay. Let's see if she wants to wake up early. Morning. She just got a bath yesterday and it rained all night. <laughs> uh, well, let's check her oil and then let's go. Wakey, wakey. There you are. I know, I know. It's early. It's early. Go get it. 
So here I am. But it's Friday. Did I tell you that already? It's Friday. Tomorrow is Saturday. Saturday is one of my favorite days. They know I'm here. I just don't know where I'm, uh, if, if I'm in the good spot or not. They know I'm here. I guess they'll tell me to move. I'm guessing that's got to be my load there. There's no other truck here loading. And they're getting that thing ready. Lined up to put on a trailer. And I'm the only trailer here. So it's got to be that. So tomorrow's Saturday. Uh, if I don't get called into work, I'm going to go to our property and gather some firewood, clean up some of the deadfall in our bush, uh, bring it home. We've got a wood splitter. I'm going to split it up. I'd also like to take my uh, uh, gas generator to the land as well, see if it's powerful enough to power our air conditioning in our camper for the summer. I'm pretty sure it is. It's a 3,000 watt generator. And I, I think that'll be enough to at least get the air conditioning going. We may not be able to use a whole bunch of electricity there, but at least if we have a nice, cool place to go and cool down in the summer while we're there enjoying our place, uh, that, that's all I really want for this year. Uh, we won't be getting water in this year or hydro, which to us in Manitoba, hydro is electricity. It's Manitoba hydro, it's all hydropower. Our hydro or our, our electricity in Manitoba is actually some of the cleanest in the world. Do you know this? It's all hydro dams up north. We uh, block a river and it creates electricity and there's no uh, like big uh, coal smoke or gas emissions going into the air. I don't know if you're into that kind of stuff. It's kind of cool. Kind of cool, I guess. That there. See, he's lining it up in such a way that I think he's going to get me to park right in the middle and then they'll just whoop, plop it onto the trailer and bada bing, bada boom. My first assignment for Friday is done. Well, half done. I gotta bring it back yet without without it falling off. That's the goal. The goal is always not to hit anything, not to lose anything, not to break anything, and to get home safely. The goal of every day. And get to work safely too. Which, I tell you what, some of the commuters on the highway with me in the mornings, they make it very difficult to get to work safely sometimes. Man, people are aggressive on the 59 highway, uh, like uh, south of Winnipeg. I'd be heading north because I'm coming from Steinbeck up 59, if you're familiar with the area. It's a two-lane highway anyways, right? And, you know, I do a decent speed, a decent speed. But for some reason, everybody else wants to go 150. I'm not even joking. And they will be like this far from my rear bumper because I'm, I'm going too slow. I'm doing the speed limit. Every morning, every morning, and then they get mad. They start flashing their lights in your mirror, and then they, they finally, they just floor it, get around you. And I had a guy yesterday hit the gravel shoulder because he was mad, that mad at me that I was doing the speed limit. He was in such a hurry, hit the gravel shoulder and floored it again to kick rocks up at me. I got him on, on camera and stuff too. I didn't include that in the vlog because it's, it doesn't really have anything to do with my day. I just have it for my camera's running just for evidence you know in case I find damage and stuff but I don't want to make my vlog a vlog of just uh, showing you bad things that happen because bad things happen to everybody but man people need to calm down on that highway in the morning they are every day every day today was a nice drive into work though because uh, I was so early I, I beat all the traffic no one was on the highway yet it was just me it was glorious I could just listen to my tunes put the cruise on Nobody running right up my back end. I was like the only one on the highway. It was it was wonderful. Maybe I should start early every day. But that means I have to get up early every day. <laughs> Once in a while is okay. Once in a while, but every day. Man, I was up at 4.30 this morning, and that was cutting her close. I probably should have gotten up at 4. Probably. We made it. We made it. Cut her a little close, but I mean, if there was any other problems on the road, it would be, uh, we would have probably been late. But here we are. Long time waiting to get loaded. I'm gonna go talk to that uh, talk to that guy over there. Over there. See if he wants to load me. If that's my stuff or not. Let's go. Okay. That is not my freight. My freight is not ready yet. <laughs> uh, Seven thirty-three. I won't be ready for another two hours. So looks like we're gonna be doing some thumb twiddling this morning, waiting for our freight. I'm just gonna let my load dog know so 
that he doesn't think I'm just slacking off, not doing anything. I'm going to load uh, here in Woodland. Load is not ready. Should be ready by 9.30 around 9.30. They didn't say by 9.30. They said at least 9.30. Uh, should be ready around 9.30. I want to be clear with them. You always want to communicate with them. Let them know what's going on. Uh, we have very, very good load gods back in the office. I like all of them and they're, they're very nice people. So uh, as long as I tell them what's going on, where I am, why I am where I am, what what's happening and uh and just keep them in the loop they, they they never harass me or anything for information about what's going on uh I, I feel like they trust my ability to get the job done and that if anything goes wrong like now i'll let them know just like that so uh you know they don't gotta chase me down i, I think i believe i have a good record with that i've been here what 10 years now that I'll, I'll take care of my stuff out here. You just give me all the details that I need to get my freight and where it's going and stuff, and I'll take care of it. To the best of my ability, I'll go the extra mile and try to take as much weight off their shoulders as I can, and I'll do it myself. And if I come into a snag or a problem or a delay, I'll let them know immediately, not later, that, oh, by the way, I was delayed two hours. No, as soon as you find out you're gonna be delayed, let them know. They may, they, they may care, they may not, but at least they know, right? It covers your butt, then they know why it's taking longer than they thought it might. And then they don't start thinking, huh, did this guy stop for a two hour coffee or what? They know where you are then. Well, they always know where I am, but uh, cause I have a, a tracking device on here. They don't gotta wonder about that, but you get it, you get it. Always uh, communication is key to any relationship, whether it's with your wife, or with your coworkers, communication, just so that you know what's going on. Load me up. Not too sure what this stuff is, but it's taking a little while though. And it's gonna take a little while to tie down too. It looks a little tricky. That took a lot longer than it was supposed to. Getting back now, one o'clock. We left here at 6 a.m. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, seven hours. <laughs> oh well, it is what it is. We're just getting back now. We're gonna find a hole to put this in and park it there. Leave it for the highway driver. I've got to take my straps off. Uh, the highway driver will use his own. I know, I think it would work a lot better if the straps stayed with the trailer. I, I agree with you. I, I know what your comments are going to say already. But it's just the way it works here. I'm going to take my straps back and I'm going to hook onto a, a dry van trailer for this afternoon and go pick up some freight that's bound for Mexico. This freight behind me, this stuff's going into Ontario. I think it's going to a small town called Brussels. Brussels, Ontario. Sort of like Brussels, Belgium, except it's Brussels, Ontario. It's near Toronto, I think, somewhere in there. Hopefully I'll be able to find a spot to park this. It's usually pretty full on Fridays here. Stay open, gate. Stay open. I'm coming. There's that car with the cover again. But that cover blows around so much, I would think that underneath it would scratch the paint because it's moving, it's not tight. 
Oh, and there's a Western Star there with a busted out window. Uh-oh. What did the same thing happen to him that happened to me last year? You remember that? I was in the Peterwheel den, the window got smashed out. Oh, so this is the whole load that took all day. First of all, it was supposed to be ready at 7 a.m. It was only ready at 9.30. And then they took almost three hours humming and hawing over how they wanted to load it. I'm gonna try this and try that and try this and try that. Until I finally got to it, tied it down, brought it back here, got back here around 1, 1.30. Well, what did I say, it was one o'clock. So I'm just gonna roll up my equipment here. The next driver's coming right away, I'm sure, to uh, tie it down with his equipment. And he'll be pulling it on into Ontario. And then we're going to go grab a van trailer and head into Winnipeg. So I hang all of my straps on the side of the trailer on one side. Because I have a strap roller on this side. So I bring them all to this side, hang them up along the trailer. Usually I'll bring them up closer here too, but today I didn't. And then I grab it from the hook end. I do this to get out any of the twists. Okay, now that you know it's all straight, just throw it in there and you'll notice I greased it. I didn't get WD-40, but I got what's called 45. It's a lubricant similar to it. Finally roll up my straps without bursting my eardrums with that screeching it's like nails on a chalkboard and then they get neatly placed in here a few more to go one thing you always want to make sure you do uh, or don't do however you look at it start rolling it with this end so that the hook is on the outside because you don't want to throw the hook over your freight ever that hook can knock someone out on the other side. When you roll it up like this, you leave the hook on the outside, and you don't have to worry about that. Let me show you. Let me get this thing all rolled up. Okay. Now I have the strap rolled up like this, right? Go like this, maybe a little more. Grab this with your left hand, the hook, so that that's safe, it doesn't go flying around anywhere, then you use the weight of this and you throw it up like this so that it's rolling backwards as it goes over the freight. Then by the time it gets to the other side, if someone happens to be there that you didn't see, you should check first. But if it, ha it happens, accidents happen. And, we, and if that does happen, I'd much rather get hit with, by the time it gets to that side, maybe about half of this, it might be a little uncomfortable, a little a, a, a lot better than being hit with a metal hook that could knock you out and do some serious damage so remember never throw your hook over your freight always throw the strap over that's why when you roll it up you should always land up with your hook like this facing inwards so that your logos are nicely on the outside of the strap when you strap something down so that as you're going down the highway you can proudly display that. Because the logos are only on one side. The other side's just blank. See that? Where's an actual logo? Here, see? This one's a little old, but logo, no logo. So when you throw it over this way, your logos are facing outward. That part is just because it looks better. That part's all up to you, but if I can give you any pointers, never throw steel over your load. It's just, plus if you don't make it all the way around, it might hook, come around, bang your freight and damage your freight. That could scratch paint, that could make a dent depending on what your freight is. Whereas if this thing hooks and this thing comes around and hits your freight, you know, like it's not gonna do anything. And then of course, remember to always Always put your tools away neatly. I'm supposed to grab 5198 now. It'll be a dark hole van trailer. 5123, it's a little Keystone trailer. 
behind our other trailer that we just left there oh please be clean please please be clean inside please oh. you always want to follow directions come on 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 big money decent Decent, it has been swept out. However, the nails are still in the floor here. I'm gonna have to go along here and check to see all the nails, pull the nails out. But other than that, hey, someone did sweep this trailer out and I appreciate it. Thank you. Don't forget the nails. Actually, I don't wanna, I don't wanna criticize all the time. I don't I know when there's, did a good job. I mean, there's one more step. There's nails in the floor, I gotta pull those out. That sign is actually there to make sure that the top latches in properly. This trailer uh, was left here, that top one wasn't latched in. I feel bad, I don't want to criticize. I know, I know, but at the same time, I want to put a little bit of pressure on everybody just to just to go one, one more step further. Just to be just a little bit better, a little bit, bit by bit. We'll get there. We to, just want to encourage everybody to do 110% all the time. Little squeaky. Whew. She's being loaded up right now. There's a little bit of a tight fit. Just a bit. But I didn't have to hit the mud like many other drivers did. Look at this. Guys have been like digging this all up over here. I didn't have to do that. I did come up on this area here a little bit, but not to the soft stuff. So there's no room to turn around over there. It's a dead end. I learned that last time I came here and had to do a U-turn in this tiny little area here. So this time, I started facing that way down this alley. And then I backed in around this corner. And got myself in there. And the wind is just rushing around that corner right now. Oh yeah, just testing out my patience and my skill this Friday afternoon. Good thing the weekend's calling me. <laughs> so, I've got the paperwork here now. I'm picking up 10 skids here. And these 10 skids are going to, uh, I think it's pronounced, I think it's pronounced Juarez, Chihuahua, Mexico. Uh, Chihuahua is a province of Mexico, and Juarez, I believe, is the town. Juarez. Uh, J-U-A-R-E-Z. Chihuahua. Like the dog. It's an annoying dog. I'm sure the province is much nicer than the dog. Juarez, Chihuahua. We are bringing this to El Paso, Texas, and uh, it will be kept there in bond. And I'm sure a Mexican truck driver is going to come up there, pick it up, and bring it into Mexico. Uh, we don't go into Mexico. I never have. Uh, I don't know anybody who actually has. Usually we just bring all the freight to the Mexican border, 
and the Mexican truck drivers come up, they pick it up and they bring it into Mexico. Uh, Mexico, like, I don't want to speak like for certain, but I'm assuming, and you know what they say about that, never assume, but I'm assuming that we don't go into Mexico because it's dangerous, uh, especially in Northern Mexico. A lot of it is run, uh, overrun by cartels. Like I've never been there myself. So like I said, I don't know for sure, but I'm assuming, and I should never assume, but here we are. I am assuming that we don't go into Mexico because it's too dangerous, but uh, it may also be other reasons that uh, could be like, uh, maybe we don't have trade, the same trade deals with them that we do with the US. Maybe we don't have the same, maybe we're not allowed to drive commercial vehicles into Mexico like we can into the US. Maybe that's the reason, maybe it's a simple reason just like that. But even if I was allowed to drive into Mexico, I don't think I would accept a load down there just because of the, you know, the cartel activity there. I don't want to get caught up uh, in any of that. It's, it could be a little dangerous. And me being a little Canadian from way up north, I'm not familiar with that area at all. At all. So I don't know what to expect. I don't know what to look for. But hey, maybe it's... Maybe it's all right. Do you live in northern Mexico? Maybe you can teach me. Uh, do you know why we don't drive into Mexico? Is there a trade deal barrier there with Canada? And uh, are you a Mexican truck driver that comes up and picks up freight like this? And, uh, oh. There we go, being loaded again. And uh, if you are a Mexican truck driver, what's it like driving through northern Mexico? Is it safe? Is it okay? Is it just like driving in the US and Canada? Just in Spanish? I'm very curious right now, because this freight's going to Mexico. And that is squeaky. I think my trailer is sitting against the dock just right to make it squeak like that. What does this guy got in the back of his pickup? What in the world is that? One strap on it. One. What is that? I gave him one of these. I don't know, man. I don't know. I wouldn't have hauled. I wouldn't have gotten on the highway like that. If you want to go for it? Seems to be working. People are crazy, man. You've really got to be on the defensive all the time. All the time. Always looking around, you see who's going to do what next. Looks like they piled this extra high on this rut here because they know it's going to pack down. <laughs> And of course we got the smallest amount of rain, so everything is just mud again. All these clean trucks, all dirty again. It's amazing what a little rain does. It softens everything right up again. They got that big pile of gravel right over there. That's for this. I guess they just didn't get around to it this week. Maybe Monday, I guess. At least they have a plan. They probably just haven't had any time. It was a busy day again today. Open her up. Oh, oh, oh yes. Oh, I have to wipe her down anyway. Look at her, she's still dusty. Mm. Turn that on, turn that on, turn that on. And... Oh, 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 oh. So this is what we're dealing with. We get them from Sobeys. They're really delicious. 
I call them brain burgers. Sobeys is a it's a big grocery chain uh, in our province. <laughs> That'll do. Oh, yes. Oh, feel the heat. Oh, yes. Okay. The whole barbecue for three burgers. That's the way I roll. The whole thing. We're not going to need it so hot, though. Let's turn it down to about medium on all of them. There we go. Maybe just below medium. They cook pretty fast. 